All right. Welcome to Was It Real? The Hills Rewatch Podcast, Season 1, Episode 10. Timing is everything. And today, well, we have an OG Hills producer, Sophia Rossi, joining us. Welcome, Sophia. How are you doing? Good. Thank you it for having been me. Too long. <laughs> so you were a part of our lives Sophia. every day. See, Sophia was my homie outside the outside the <laughs> producers. We we just were like, she was the homie. <laughs> Sophia, give the fans your background and um how you got started on the hills and how you became kind of part of the casting pro- process. I'm like trying to remember, but basically I did the pilot because one of the producers, I had worked on another show and they were saying that they were going to do an extension of Laguna and I hadn't seen Laguna. And so I did the pilot and then in between the pilot was like six weeks and then we sort of went straight into production. But I like remember thinking of you guys being like the kids, the kids, the kids. And I was like, wait, I wasn't like that much older than them. But like you just suddenly you had to like have this like separation. But yeah, I remember how we cast Audrina and then I remember, yes, but I remember it's, my life sort of like bleeded in because it you was, were like one of the girls. I remember that. Like, <laughs> yeah. She was we like were, secretly, she yeah. should have been on the show. Like she, I should have. She was, she was yeah. kind of like on the show. Well, but and not. I think we all called you for everything, like advice. And, like, you used to lose your phone on. and you only had one number that you memorized and you would call me. You're like, I'm so sorry I lost I my phone, but you're the only number I know by heart. And I was like, this is, I have a great phone number. <laughs> I saw like, your number every day. <laughs> no, I have a very good phone number. Well, it's easy. Yes. I won't say it here. But yeah. yes, I, I I was like, Audrina, you're like, I'm sorry. I happened again. I lost help, my phone. Help, help yeah. me. Yeah. I, you were well, like- I'm so excited to see this because I haven't seen it in so long. And I like, it was such a meaningful time. I know. Well, yeah. this episode in particular, it's the last episode of season one. So it's the big Paris, yeah. Jason and Lauren episode. So we got a lot of questions, but um, it's called Timing is Everything. Yes. And I think at the top, oh, it was Lauren and Jason, this beach house. Right. So they wanted to get this house to share with each other over the summer. Was that like... They wanted to. Yeah, they totally. did. <laughs> did they? Yeah. See, sorry. there we go. What, what is They're producers? like, we, we're like 21. We love a beach house. And yeah. we're like, yeah. um, I think, you know, I'll just say like holistically, I think anything with the location is a producer. Only because I think that everyone was young mm-hmm. and didn't really have means to do those things. And then also a lot of people were not from LA and I'm from LA. And so one of the big parts of my role was choosing locations that we think people would go to. So how outside like what clubs they would go to they yeah. worked at I worked at Bolt House when I was younger like those sort of things so I think Malibu was sort of that example of like especially in LA and yeah just like, like Lauren goat. wasn't from here and like everyone had sort of, it was sort of like where do we have our birthday and I was like I guess Koi you know like it it sort yeah. of just happened Koi. like that oh my God. that was Wait, her birthday so yeah is that still open that. yeah, yeah. It's, it's still, still good by the way Let's look at the crispy rice, the bacon. Really good. Yeah. Oh, wait, that sounds <laughs> right, good. but that's an example. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry. Oh, oh, God. Gosh, okay, so like... this is about the um, a lot of Teen Vogue stuff. Yeah, lots of Teen Vogue yeah. with Lisa Love and how, you know, she talked to Lauren and Whitney and about Fashion Week assignments and then internship. Yeah. Like... So w- back to the house though, did, did they actually live in it after they wrapped the show? Because I know that the, the ending on the on this the ending is like they're by themselves. In the- this is honestly, I, I actually tried to remember this the other day. I think what happened was that because we had done the pilot and we suddenly got into production, there it was really hard to keep on people's real lives. And so Lauren and Jason were moving so quickly in their relationship. And and so they would we took a hiatus and a lot happened during the hiatus. Yeah. And so production was like, never a hiatus again. And so we didn't have one for six so we years. Filmed yeah. Non- Which is yeah. very true. Yeah, very true. true. Well, we yeah. did it because that happened. And then it became yeah. like, obviously being getting famous was the second part. But the first part was as soon as you go on hiatus, like people's real lives happen. So yeah. as much as I could check in, like they'd be like, especially with phones, they'd be like, oh, we're not talking anymore. Or we broke up. And you're like, what? Like, <laughs> we, we need to get that on camera. That, you know, so I think this is an example of we were sort of retrofitting a real-time breakup, mm-hmm. you know, with, yeah. so which was unfortunate and I guess fortunate for TV, but it was like their real breakup. Yeah. So. And then this episode too, it's LA Fashion Week, right? Yes. And so the Lauren very- has to get Lisa like two extra tickets for the Teen Vogue editors or something. Yeah. And she seems really stressed out. And I feel like that was for the show. Like, Well, okay. Were- I, w- I will say this. Lauren and Whitney really are – believe that they had a real internship like they I'm saying in their mind that this was like a, and they did I'm not saying they did it I'm yeah. saying like in their mind they'd be like we have to finish steaming that dress and I'd be like okay we'll send a PA up like it's fine you know but like but in their mind they did so just 
that's what kept it. That's amazing. Understand the context is like it felt Whitney really did try to become an intern there. Like it was Lauren's dream internships. Like all those things are real. But in order to like produce that, we had to do a lot of the extra background producing, but not make them feel that way. Mm -hmm. So in their mind, everything the stakes did feel really high, but they were not in general. But in order to do that, so yes, they she did really believe she had to do things for. Lisa Love. You yeah, know? I mean, it came across so authentic. Yeah, and that's yeah. why it is. I don't think that part is fake. I just think mm-hmm. a lot goes into filming that. Mm-hmm. To so, make like that the LA Fashion Week and just adding the, to the chaos and just storylines and all of that. Too, yeah, and like big setups. rushing and stress. And yeah. It was a big God. crew, too. I mean, it was like a, that was a massive I know. production. It how, was like, yeah. How were you guys able to shoot that fashion show? Because that's a, it was Jack Nicholson's daughter. Oh, yeah. Like it was her show. Um, I think we were, we got really good at positioning people in certain sections. Like you guys had like frameworks to walk around and sometimes they'd go off handheld and like, you know, follow each other. But you know, one of our cinematographers, do you guys remember Rachel? Yes. Yeah, well, yeah, Rachel. She was nominated for an Oscar. What? Yeah. No she's way. like the first that's female amazing. cinematographer. Yeah. She oh, was so, so cool. and she would always like try to set up the shots all the time. Like, Rachel, we don't care. Like, keep it moving. And she's like, no, no, it needs to look really good. Like what? we had like really like it was cinematic. It a was lot of our crew beautiful. was from like AFI. So they took it really seriously. Mm-hmm. So I think what they did is just like they scouted the locations all the time. They kind of made sure where everyone stood. We like released everyone in the room so they could like anytime anyone talked to anyone, they were prepared. So yeah. It, a lot of pre-production went into it. But those big locations are kind of what make it so special. It's like yeah. no one had access to No LA one had like access that. to the clubs, first and foremost, especially like an alliance or the Brent right. Bowhouse yeah. clubs where like Josh was like, hell no, we're not getting no cameras. Mm-hmm. Brent was the same. Right, of course. Jen and Brent, no cameras in the club. If I see you take a picture, yeah. with your, like even if you brought like your little, like they were just like completely no cameras. Everything was, and for there to be the first time that you were going to see inside a club, but we did it justice, and I think anyone like that saw it on the show like does talk about being like Ledoux. I was Ledoux. gonna say you know Ledoux. I mean? was like, like, you guys made Ledoux pop. Yeah, yeah. Like, that no, but was, that's what I'm saying. But but yeah, this is the first time anyone in the world was able to see what happened be- behind the scenes the, right. at a cl- LA club because LA clubs were like the yeah, it was definitely like a moment in that. But yeah, I just remember like filming in club scenes and like as soon as I saw like the hot dog vendor I was like oh we're almost done <laughs> like I like <laughs> oh, oh, we'd be watching the in the back in the, the back best. Yeah. I was like okay okay we got this we oh got this oh my gosh yeah. so Heidi go- she's at Bolt House and that was kind of her real job in the beginning or no? Yeah, I worked at Bolt House when I was like 18. And mm-hmm. so when we were looking for types of jobs, she said she really wanted to be in nightlife. And yeah. she and so she interviewed there. And then it was her real job because at that point, I think she did um, need to like work too. But she wasn't – it was interesting that that was her real job because she was never really into nightlife, you know? So I think – I think she just wanted to be around everything that was fun and like – Totally. I'm know. just saying like she never had like that desire. She wasn't like – I mean she would go planner. out but I don't think that yeah. was really like yeah. her thing. I know? know Brent gave her the two tickets to the fashion show which she brought me as her plus. Yeah. Um, but did you guys – I mean that had to have already been planned that we were going or did Brent really give her – those two tickets as like his I think I mean I don't remember but we probably were like I mean I don't think it's that hard to get two tickets for LA Fashion Week I mean at the show it was I I think we I think we also really want to upplay LA Fashion Week like no one's ever heard of it in in a real way but I think we were like okay this is a great like we're gonna get to New York eventually let's like let's put a lot of these are just they're really good locations beautiful like it was shot so beautifully and just so intriguing like seeing fashion and models and it looked like a real show yeah it looked like like oh LA Fashion Week is dope but wasn't it at Smashbox at the other location that was at Smashbox not at the Coyote Santa yeah, Monica yeah. Boulevard one. Right, right, right. One. Yeah. yeah. They did a good job. I think we I just know. knew it was going to be a good setting with a lot of... And it was nice that where I really I really worked there. Like everything was intertwined yeah. naturally, which was great. We used to come film there and you'd be like, we're like, where are the plugs or whatever? You're like, oh, I'll show you. We're like, no, you're talent. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I really work here. Yeah. <laughs> so that was... Yeah. I can't believe Kelly... Was so early on. Yeah, in I didn't see it. Kelly Catrone. I didn't think yeah. she came no, on. She, she came she on came Gangster. She came no, on I know. She's the last. She's the last episode. That's how you introduce her. She doesn't. Yeah, Lauren right, doesn't right, right. know who she is. Yeah. He's like, I'm looking for Kelly Catrone. He's like, right. that's me. What's right. up? Yeah, like, exactly. Like, she gangster her. Yeah. Well, because later on she's a big factor, and then you know mm-hmm. that's because that's how Lauren gets her internship. I know. Yeah. I still talk to her every now and then. She's funny. She's so funny. Yeah. She's actually really cool to hang out with and. 
Yeah, she's she's, she's great on the show. I was yeah, that last do you episode. keep up with like Jen and Brent and them, Sophia? I do. Yeah, we they we check in, and um, I honestly I think that like it was such a they were like separate relationships. I was just wanted to make sure we did them justice because it was like their work, you mm-hmm. know. And I think they were. I didn't want them to like think we were like taking advantage or being because it is a lot to like come into a club and kind of distract it. But I think overall it worked out. But they yeah. were happy about it. Yeah. You know, I mean, with Kelly, how involved was she in that fashion scene? Like, did she, she was. was that all her or did you guys kind of that? No, she the, she was rolling her eyes. She, and yeah. She would be like, oh, my God, <laughs> you need to hurry up. If you're going to be in the fashion world. You need to she's like, I a, need names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, she's who? a character. She's I, like, mean, I don't care if they're at Vogue. What are their names? I know everyone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah I think people really gravitated from the producer side to like characters. It just makes your job so yeah. much easier and she's definitely yeah. a character and even Lisa loves a character in her like as much as she doesn't she doesn't give it yeah did yeah. you guys kind of obviously have to kind of guide her and be like can you like or prep her in ways about certain things um yeah I think they always kept saying like I think they had a hard time with our timeline I don't know if you guys remember you guys would always be like is this before or after Christmas or like there's like yeah. timeline stuff that we would have and so I think that they were like this is my real job like can you just yeah, they don't. Yeah. They don't <laughs> like, get it. We're like yeah. in t- La La Land, like TV Land. Yeah. So I think <laughs> though, but they the only prepping they really needed was you know, sometimes they they're like I would really say this like a big statement everyone always said is mm-hmm. I would never really say that you yeah. know and yeah. we'd be like well we'd never really be here so <laughs> I think but I think yeah. that they were sort of like this is what I would say yeah that's good because then yeah. it's more genuine. Totally like there, you guys were really good at letting us when we were put into situations letting us actually finish out the conversations without interrupting without yeah I mean, like I feel like that was something that was a big problem with the new the new hills the the new beginning was like. Soon as we'd get rolling, they just would come up and be like, "Oh no, no, stop!" Like we yeah, need you to talk about, yeah. it. and it just kind of like it ruined every like yeah. the whole mood. You know, I think about it a lot because I we film so much in LA, and I get like there's just so many restaurants where I'm like, "This is two hills for me," like or you know, like because we just sat in the car listening to like three hour dinners, you know, in order to use one line. But it was so funny for <laughs> us, yeah. so funny. You, Brody, you have one of my all time favorite. Oh Wait, what is it? Okay, one? so we're oh at God. a restaurant and it's you and Lauren and you're eating and you're having a soup and you're like, um, what is this? And you're like, I, you know what? I think this is lobster bisque. And we were like, this is definitely not lobster bisque. You're like, yeah, you know what? It's totally lobster bisque. <laughs> like, we just were dying in the car because like there was no one to be like, hey guys, this is not really that yeah, or whatever. And you're like, okay, is- but you were like kids like on a date or yeah. like whatever, like going out. So this, this is just definitely funny. Lo- this is definitely lo- I'm like, totally, it's lobster bisque. So this is, this is, your, so this is more about um, Lauren and her um, experience. Yeah, getting the two girls in, or not girls, but like the two Vogue editors into the fashion show, which she seemed really stressed out about. And then whenever me and Heidi walked in, it's like the look on her face. She thought we were crashing the party. You're like, what are you doing here? Right. Because she took her work. Right? Yeah, yeah. She did take it very it, serious. It, it was cool to see Lauren kind of like, because I was watching it last night and I'm like looking at it with my wife and and she was like, I never saw this stuff. She, My wife never watched that those episodes the first season. And she was seeing like how like Lauren, like how you really see her come to age, like become a, a little mogul little by little and like all the steps that she took that was one of the biggest steps where like she she came through for lisa like mm-hmm. i did it like yeah. there's no way like anybody like she was yeah. a great producer you know she didn't know it but i think that's like what makes her so successful is in this she understood she really wanted to work hard you know and yeah. i think filming makes it where she probably didn't get the full advantage she could get out of working at mm-hmm. teen vogue because we were filming mm-hmm. but she got other benefits but i do think that she did really go to fashion school you oh, know yeah. like that was and that was yeah. that was real she, yeah. I remember she would sit there and had to sketch and do homework every night yeah I sat <laughs> I basically went to fit him I sat in her classes yeah oh <laughs> they were like what is a subsidiary of Mark Jacobs and they'd be like mark by mark <laughs> I'm like totally <laughs> <laughs> well did Lauren really flub the names or was that made up yeah like, I think she yeah did. yeah but I mean like I think also like if you're not from LA and New York these are like legends in a very specific world so yeah. it's hard to ask a girl from Laguna to be like, I know who I Hamish mean, she Boyles was is. thrown into there. Yeah. Into that moment and just, she did well. She, Lauren's always been a good problem solver. Mm-hmm. Just even with friends and advice, like the advice giver. Yeah, she really is. 
Is your dog's breed mix a mystery? You're not alone. About 72% of pup parents are puzzled when it comes to their dog's breed. It's time to end these guessing games and get the answers with Embark Dog DNA Test. Now, before digging into details, we'd like to thank EmbarkVet.com for supporting Was It Real? Go to EmbarkVet.com to get free shipping and save $40 with promo code Hills. So I love and I'm so excited to get this Embark DNA test because I have a dog named Lady and she is getting older. So I would love to learn anything about her to just to help her through these last few years and to see what her DNA results are. In less than 30 seconds, Embark's soft swab collects enough saliva to analyze twice as much genetic data as a competition. In fact, Embark screens over 210 genetic health risks across 350 breeds. That's more breeds tested than any other dog DNA test. The process is so simple. You swab your pup with the cheek swab sent to you, mail it back in the provided prepaid return envelope, and in just a few weeks, your dog results will be ready. Plus, Embark can help you and your vet put together a personalized care plan for your dog. When I did it with Lady, it was so easy. It took seconds. All I did was swab her cheek. I got the cotton swab nice and wet. And then you put it inside the little package and you mail it in. And then Embark literally sends you updates when they receive it and then what the process is. You know your best friend deserves the best care possible. So be proactive with their health with Embark Dog DNA Test. Just go to EmbarkVet.com and use promo code HILLS to get $40 off an Embark Breed and Health Kit or Purebred Kit with free shipping. That's promo code HILLS to save today. There's a certain confidence that comes with being properly groomed. There's an aura, a vibe. You can just tell by the way they carry themselves. We call this BGE, big groomed energy. And there's only one way to get that BGE, and that's Manscaped. Manscaped's brand new Platinum Package 4.0 is the biggest bundle they've ever offered, giving you a bulk discount on Manscaped's top products. Inside this Platinum Package, you'll find their lawnmower, 4.0 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear, nose, and hair trimmer, an ultra premium TM body wash, ultra premium TM2 in one shampoo, plus conditioner, ultra premium deodorant, and crop preserver anti shaping ball deodorant, and their crop reviver. Manscaped's by far the leader in below the waist grooming. I personally love the anti shaping ball deodorant. It's perfect for this heat wave that just came to LA. With the purchase of the Platinum Package, Manscaped will throw in two gifts, the Manscaped TM Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. Bring your comfort and boxers to another level. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code HILLS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And use code HILLS. Unlock your big groomed energy with Manscaped. And remember, when you trim the hedges, the tree stands taller. But you're in this episode too, right? You come to the. I go, I, yeah, I go with Heidi to the fashion show. But you're still living at this point across the street. Yeah, I'm yeah. still in the same hillside villas or yeah. the villas. And I would, at that point, I was hanging out more with Heidi. Yeah, this is where Heidi tells you that. Are you that she's over Jordan and she wants the boys and like yeah party like and- Heidi would come over to my apartment a lot because Lauren was always with Jason and then when Heidi yeah. wasn't with Jordan she would come over to my place so that's how Heidi and I became super close. What was the thing they used to always say like Bible or by like I don't know that I used to say no, no, Bible, oh. okay. Bible was a uh, what was like the like like I promise or like yeah. this is the truth. There was some like saying I feel like her. That was a Jordan. Kardashian thing, no? Huh. No, but Jordan, Bible. Jordan, and Heidi had something. I don't remember. Yeah, it I was feel so- like they had a lot of little things. Yeah, Brian just, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Brian just earlier. threw them out. Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, like they would talk like dogs to each other. Yeah, like poopy, like that. Yeah. <laughs> With all the nicknames. Well, after the fashion show, then the next scene, Lauren thinks she's going to get in trouble because Lisa calls her into the office again. But it's actually a good thing. It's about getting the intern to Paris. It probably was a hard decision for Lauren to have to make because it, it's like your real life offer. And then it's like, yeah, but then you have to do this with all those cameras and, and a certain part of your life, you know? My yeah. girlfriend was very upset about that. We were watching the, the episode last night and <laughs> she was like, she girl. better go to Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare not I go know. to Paris. And she's like, and then it makes it look like she's going. And they, you guys did a great job I, at editing. Yeah. We're like, she's waiting at the airport. But Lauren, it looks like you're thinking, oh, she's going to go. And then just... I mean, Adam, Adam, I don't know who the creative person for that, but let's blame Adam for that one. 
Adam always had the best cliffhangers. Even the ending of the show, how we ended the the, the entire. Yeah, yeah. That was good, yeah. The, Lauren those, used to be like a forever ending shoot. Like, if someone would ask her to do something, they'd be like, "You're she's just you're just gonna throw an Avril Lavigne song on this and just put it over at the end." Like, <laughs> oh like, God. but like she like knew that like whatever he would do would make some moment. But how actually, you know, that that's interesting you bring that up because how cool, like one of the things I did notice when I was watching it is the music. Yeah. You know, we had the best music. Oh my God, and the and pilot, they, we have Rihanna. We, like everything was Lady what we Gaga. had, you know, because we were with MTV. So we did, I was watching all these different scenes and the music played such a big role in so much it, of that it show. It went with like, the, they yeah. were, like whoever was doing this music with the episode. and it was the, great. Where, it always went with like whatever was happening. Yeah, like, even the lyrics of the song. Yeah, yeah it was like well, this. that was a big thing. I think our our editors were some of the best editors. Absolutely, they yeah. they really knew how to. So much work was done on the back end, but the music. Yeah, we had Rihanna. We had all these hits, and I think everyone was like, "I wonder what this will be like on DVD." But we'll just take advantage. You guys were know? you guys were so ahead of the game because all the shots that they used for this show, no one else, not any. There was no other show like this that was shooting shows like from the air views. It's almost like you guys had yeah. your own formula. The music, yeah, everything. there was a formula. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the head of the game, yeah. and also, if there was Emmys back then, that Hill season one gets an Emmy, hundred percent. Well, there well, was sh- Emmys back then. No, right? no, but no. For reality, for reality, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think Sham. You know, we had that our director. And oh, he, Sham. Yeah, and he made it look so. I I can't like stress it enough, like how well like shot it was because yeah. if you think about a reality show like that's just not usually the priority and even what you're saying like the b-roll like we had helicopter shots like colin would go up in the helicopter and get these like big oh. shots of la like he it wasn't just like we sent off or bought stock footage like right. they yeah. they went around or how it is now where you just send a drone and it does it for you totally so yeah well i have to ask because i know the whole Paris after watching it and the whole Paris and Jason thing. So that was real. Like walk us through that storyline. Cause she really got the internship at, for Paris, but then she really chose Jason over Paris. She or, really, yeah, I think, okay. Real is probably a hard word, but I think <laughs> only because what is real, you know, yeah. but um, I think the opportunity to go to Paris was real, mm-hmm. um, but it was in real time, an opportunity to go to Paris to film. And okay. so I think, you know, that's a different decision to make, whether you want to go film a reality show continuing Paris or have this internship. Uh-huh. And so I think at that point, I'm not like fully remembering, but like she was in a real relationship ha- with real stuff so going on. she didn't want to travel. She didn't want to travel, but it was almost like she was that. saying no to filming. I don't think she was saying right. no to this like big opportunity, but I do remember Adam was like, you know, how could you not do this? I, How could you not do this? Like really, every day, everyone, every day. I really, no. you, oh, so they really wanted her to go to, they really, even, yeah. even production really wanted her to go to Paris. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's very rare that a reality show gets to go to Paris. Right. I mean, we ended up going, but that's a big opportunity to get these. Anytime we had access to something, we kind of like worked backwards. Like, mm. what's going on in the Vogue calendar? Like, can we film there? And if we could, we were like, great. Like, we had a pretty good budget, you know, yeah. for a show. A lot of that went to these locations, you know? Mm-hmm. I really have... There's a show on Netflix called um, Emily in Paris or something. Yeah. I really think that somehow it's inspired this, by Lauren. Oh, yeah, it's funny. My, my girlfriend actually today said that. She said, like, I love that show. She even brought it up saying, because after she watched it last night, she watched like four episodes back to back. So she finally yeah. she became like fan. She's like, wait a minute. This is like, wait, she started, yeah, to, she started to really get into it. I think it, this was inspired by, by, this, by the that. hills and, and this Paris decision because it, it's yeah. literally like, you could tell that it's like this little fashion girl that wants to like, be in Paris and in fashion and they like, this is... I think you're right. Yeah, no, I think there's a Mm -hmm. lot of influence there. I mean, I think the difference in in that is that I think at that point, Lauren, you want an internship at that age. You don't know that you want a career in that, you know? And so like, it's probably like, Anyone else thinking she gave up an internship is like I know crazy. It's just everybody was like she chose Jason over Paris, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't think she regrets okay. it. Yeah, <laughs> I think she ended no. up at Paris, but I do think when you're watching, I think for you know, people are always saying like you're the girl who didn't go to Paris. You know, yeah, Lisa I know Love. that was the, yeah. Well, <laughs> oh well, my god. Also, the like title. again, it's like a like Adam was or the director or whoever is coming up with this. It's like the perfect thing you could have put for it. Like whoever scripted this is like. The girl has to choose between Paris and her love. Like, right. it's like her love over here and her love over here. 
Like yeah. what? A, like, well, I ended up working genius. out, but Adam would have wished she went to Paris. I think that. Yeah. So I think that's why everything happens for a reason. But I think we always sort of like worked around. Like, okay, well, she's saying no. Like, what's the storyline if she says no? Because you can't really force yeah. someone to go to Paris. Mm-hmm. Well, then it was <laughs> you know? like her and Jason was supportive of that. I'm sure he was stoked. She stayed. Yeah. It wasn't supportive well, when you're like, well, I'll support you, whatever. Yeah, he's like, like, well, you, well, you've been there for me, so I mean, you know, I yes. guess I'll have to be there for you. Well, who knows? Well, what, who knows what was said when the camera? I had a off. soft spot for Jason. Have you talked to him lately? No, I haven't. He he has. You should just to like understand like what a yeah. He's like a different how he being. grew up. Yeah, I'm sure he's yeah. incredible. Yeah. yeah, no, I I'm, I'm happy for him. I've I've seen like from a distance, but mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, he's definitely. Gosh. Gone. And then this is whenever. Yeah, me and Heidi were at the pool looking through our phones. We're ready to meet the next round of men. Yeah. Or boys. Yeah, oh my God, we were at that pool for so long. All the time. All the time. Yeah. In the spa. That pool time. is where we met you. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's where you're that's, casted, right? Yeah. That's yeah. where I was happen? really laying out when yeah. I met Adam. Yeah. I was getting a coffee inside. You were inside. actually laying out and they just came up to you like, hey. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Him with, and Co- with Colin. With Colin. Him yeah. and Colin. But I had two those two roommates at the time which hated me because they didn't get on the show and I did, which yeah. caused a lot of drama and I was out of there. <laughs> I was like, get me out. But then I got my own apartment there, so... It is crazy that it was the same location. I guess a lot was going on in that apartment. There is a lot going on in that whole complex. Production would park at the Grove and then walk over. And so like anytime like we'd be like, okay, go past the Kmart to the so-and-so. And you're like, this is crazy. Like this, this little <laughs> center is nuts. I know. Gosh, yeah. that was so fun though. Heidi would love, she wanted to revert back to preschool when she had a new boyfriend every five minutes. Oh my gosh. I love Heidi. Yeah. <laughs> She's yeah. just. She's great on the show. Yeah. Even my girlfriend was saying that she was just like Heidi's so fun. She's, like, she's always she's been very fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I and know. just like very, just would say anything. You know, she bubbly. Just, yeah, just like no. Oh, well, I like, think a few people were coming off of if you either saw Laguna or were on Laguna, you probably were a little bit more guarded. And she was coming off of it with fresh eyes, so right. I think yeah. she was able Absolutely. to be like, "This is fun. Like, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. I'll go and like, LA was new to everyone. You know, and not Heidi, to every you guys, well, yeah. but yeah." But Heidi, especially because she wasn't from California, she was from Colorado. So right. she was just, it was like Hollywood, this whole new experience yeah. in LA. Now, Sophia, you were like in this like other bubble, not just the hills, but but you were like in your in the bubble of like the A-list, it girls, all the best friends. Like you were like, what did they say to you when they would watch the show? Would they be like, oh, that's Sophia's show? Like, let like, I, well, I remember me, you, and Lauren, we would go to dinner with Nicole sometimes. Yeah. And she used to, like, ask us a million questions about the show. Like, she loved the Hills I think she loved – I mean, she does love it. I think, you know, she was on her own show, and it was, like, a different format. And, yeah. like, she's from here, and, and I think she got a kick out of it. Mm-hmm. And I think, to our credit, not mine, but, like, Adam and everyone, like, everyone worked really hard. And so producing it was kind of like producing – it's not really a reality show, you know? It was sort of like this bridge. Mm-hmm. And so – I think there was a lot of like fun things that are like about the production, like room tone or, yeah. you know what I mean? Well, you like, got to give yourself credit that you were the one that was like, nah, we're filming here. I have the connection to Brent. I have the connection to Koi. I have the, like you had the connection to what was cool that made it legendary. Those things are the things that people come up to people and go, oh my God, they do. Do you remember when they, they were fighting at your birthday? And I'm like, well, yeah, I do remember. Yeah. Well, I think, thank you. But I think it's also like I was young and so it was my first production, like producer job. And so I didn't really have like a history of producing. So what I could bring to the table was, you know, Adam. You brought a lot to the table with all of that. It, <laughs> it factor and, and being able to uh, kind of like you could – well, yeah. communicate and You could have been on the show yeah, type exactly. of thing. Yeah. Thanks, guys. That means a lot. <laughs> um, no, they had that role they created in Laguna, which was like talent producer. So I was like a talent mm-hmm. producer for a while and then um, – but yes, but I think for the locations and stuff, it was that everyone was – not from here, but cool. And like, they wanted to be a part of things. And so yeah. I honestly, sometimes rather, rather than going to a club, I like loved filming in clubs. It was so funny. We could just like <laughs> you sit back and watch all the chaos. Honestly, unravel. all the time. And when they'd be like, <laughs> oh try God. to order pizza, I was like, we have to shut this down. Oh, like, we did that all the time. Yeah. At the end of the night, we would order pizza to the club. Totally. Yeah. But I, I think that it felt nice to like, sometimes I would get nervous when you guys would have clubs without us. Cause I do think that there was a lot of like, we made sure everyone got home yeah. or we make sure people, I mean, not that they're responsible, like Uber wasn't really around. So there were certain parts where 
it was nice to be a production being like. And you didn't know what was going. I mean, now we have social media. A lot of times people post it on their stories. They oh know my what's God, going we on. Could, yeah. Back then it was like, whatever. nobody knows what happened unless no, they except tell you what happened. Those like BBM on T Mobile sidekicks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I used to call oh, it, yeah, yeah. yeah, or Blackberry. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. And was for sidekick, and, and then BBM the Blackberry was for BBM. BBM. I had a joke. I was BBM Productions because <laughs> I would just on my I do my whole job from BBM. I'd be like, okay, they're here, they're going here, they're just going. <laughs> but you, I, yeah. Does Jason? Jason is in the beginning. Is the end of here? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So Jason. So now, yeah. This is towards the end of the episode. So like, Lauren says goodbye to Heidi, walks out, and then. They cut to Lisa Love at the airport, but you think Lauren's going to the airport. Like she's yeah. waiting for Lauren. And yeah, that she's waiting. And then they show Jason on the balcony. And then they show like legs walking up and it's Whitney going to Lisa. And then Lauren goes to Jason. But Whitney didn't go. Or well, in the show it looks like she went to LAX and she's going to Paris and right. Lauren chose Jason. And then I yeah, I went I'm watch I was so into it I watched another episode. Really? <laughs> Did you? You watched Did the second, you watch the second, second season? season? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait, is it there? Don't like... tell me because I haven't watched it yet. Uh, yeah. Not there yet. yeah, I mean they, they don't be... they don't really they you I mean yeah, Whitney went to Paris, you know, or whatever. Did she actually thing. go to Paris, yeah, I mean, though? Like, right, we're she, jumping ahead, but she, I mean, did she? Like, did she take that internship? Like, what was inside that that um That carry-on? That yeah. They don't really touch that much on it. They just come back and say, oh, how was Malibu? Because I think, you know, to your point earlier, you were saying that you missed a lot of, like, the real, like, it, there was a break in production, and then they broke up, and all these things happened. So when they when you guys do go back to filming it, it's very just like, well, we missed so much. Oh, yeah, Paris was great. I was Paris. Oh, yeah. Yeah me, and, yeah, me and Jason are done, you know, but you missed so much because the show ended with Lauren and Jason just about to enjoy beautiful Malibu. And then we really got to but see But then there's, I, because I have a, it's probably the next one, but I have like a specific memory of filming. It's like a first, like, real scene. And I was like, oh. I should not be here. This is so oh. crazy. I was like in the attic, like, with, with Lauren oh and Jason. God. Yeah, with like production. I wasn't just me in the attic, but I was like, Oh in my the God. attic. Like yeah. They were like, what, they're fighting gnarly? Or? I think it was like the return of items or something. We were like. Oh, right. That, I don't know. If, I and honestly don't. In the car or something on the street? Yeah, it's the car in the street. But right, we like, right, right. it was just like, you know, this is the, a real relationship, especially at that age. It's like really heightened. And there was. Lauren's crying. Uh, yeah. And yeah. like, Aww. I know. It was really hard to watch when. When one of the kids, like when the kids would cry, it was really hard <laughs> when for the me. Kids, we yeah. are the kids. So, we so, hot, the kids. so yeah. we, we just had Jordan in, in, in one of our episodes and we go through the breakup and he was kind of, we were talking about you, how like he had to like face you before he walked in and he knew it was the death sentence type of thing. Like where like he was like about to get like yeah. walking into something, walking into something. I know it's hard because I obviously... You guys got attached to us, too. Yeah, yeah, and, like, we knew what was going on, but then you never really know in, like, real time what's going to happen. And then, you know, I also, like, didn't sign up for a reality show. So I, I do think there is an element of that where you're, like, you know, I, I, I don't think we push the limits as much as I think shows do now. I really no, don't. Yeah. I do no, think, you guys were very respectful in that Yeah, way. I do think there was, like, a code of, like, okay, we're following this, so if we're following this, can we just keep this in, in like, you know, in this bubble because it's part of our jobs, you know? Mm-hmm. But with something like a breakup, it's just – we kind of just had – we ended up being better at going with the flow. But – Jordan mm-hmm. felt – Jordan felt that it was pre-planned to, like, give her, like, a an out so she could, like, blow up on the show. Like, like, like the production or was, like – to be single, like – Like, hey, know. go be single, Heidi. No, what are you doing I, arguing? Like, I, I don't Somebody think- had to push it. No? No, I honestly don't think we were that invested in in that because it was – at first, you know, there's like the way you break down an episode is like A, B, C stories and, and the characters go – This it's like a kind of like the, the post-production is like a scripted show. Like you have a storyline that you follow that's the main one and then you it flips and who the characters are. So I think at that point it was um, definitely not like a setup, but I think if Heidi had any – like desire to do a certain thing she's part of the main cast Mm -hmm. you sort of go with what the main cast energy is you know and then as the cast got bigger we figured that out but definitely like no one was like trying to like set that up but I think it was unfortunate where you're like okay this is people's like real relationships yeah there's a lot of blurred lines yeah and I think probably it must be hard to be on a show and being like maybe it's 
more fun to be single or maybe it's not, you know, or or harder to be in a real relationship. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember even in your own friendships, like people would be like, is this for camera or on camera? Like, like you yeah, know, like, I got to that point where yeah, it's like, you used to say that a lot. Real? You're like, is this for camera yeah. or not for camera? Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, it's so sad that like, you There's have to this, ask. Yeah, because yeah. then you start questioning your real friendships and relationships and like who you can trust or what's real and fake. Yeah. Or not fake, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. what the person produced, produced what's yeah. produced and what's like genuine. But gosh, all right. Well, that is the episode. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're going to get into what was real and what was not during season one. Okay. So I'm going to ask you some questions. All right. I'm going to try to remember. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so number one. Heidi's job at Bolt House. Yes. Was she actually getting a paycheck from Bolt House? Don't quote me on it, but yes, I think so. Okay. So the Teen Vogue party in episode one, did Lisa Love and Blaine know about me and Heidi crashing the party? No. Really? Yeah. Was this- I mean, I think they knew enough to be like- Something's going to happen. Something's going to happen, but what the details were, right. they didn't really- yeah. They were doing their real jobs. You know, so yeah. they were like, okay, fine. Like, let's surprise them and let's. I think we made a bigger deal out of two more people coming. Like, if you think back, like, like how Lauren's important gonna get is to get fired. Yeah. I mean, you already have camera, so how important is that? But a lot of that is like setting up the scenario where there are stakes, and sometimes you have to create stakes where they're not. And so yeah. this is one of those where ultimately yeah. it plays for that, but I don't think they were okay. as, you know. Here's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Um, why did they cut Brian's um, comedy show in season one? When everybody was like, the whole cast was there together. A lot of times, okay, so like a formula for scenes used to be that if just because the whole, sometimes it's it's more difficult when the whole cast is there because you might need them in another scenario to tell a story. So if they're all in one place and then you suddenly cut to another scene, but if nothing really happened where we didn't really have a lot of storylines where it was just like, Someone doing their thing, you know. There's like, always a story. Or like some it doesn't drama. really. It has to. Ha- it has to push the story along in some way. So there's so much that got cut. So I imagine mm-hmm. that was less about like, well, what do you get out of that scene? What mm-hmm. what tells you like they're you know unless something happened there, it's sort of just background and yeah. it ends up yeah. you nice. know each the, scene's like a minute. So what do you get out of that minute? Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, this is another good one. Did any producers kind of fight for? Brian and Jordan to come back for season two or was everybody like okay we've done what we had to do with them on to the next before knowing Brody and Spencer were going to come in right because that was just like a I don't out of think nowhere. they knew keep Brody in mind, yeah keep in mind like think of the poster you know like like it's it's really about it was around like sex in the city it, we were sort of like going off of this like what do people care about and it was the four girls so mm-hmm. I don't know that they fought or didn't fight for but I think the priority was okay we just locked down what the concept is because it was first following Lauren to LA was Adam's idea you know and so I I, yeah I came on as like that's kind of what I thought it was and then it sort of evolved into oh we met Audrina and then obviously it was going to be following Lauren to LA and her friend Heidi Mm -hmm. and then it everyone's we sort of went that sex in the city route Mm -hmm. of like okay we have these like four really interesting women who are like figuring out their lives. And so we focused on that. But um, so was Whitney casted or no? No, Whitney was, um, if I remember correctly, we were filming at Teen Vogue and she went up for, she was in there for a real internship mm-hmm. at GQ or something upstairs. Mm-hmm. And someone saw her and, and they were like, we needed someone to do interviews because it was like a, like a, people were interviewing for internships. And so she did it. But it honestly makes me laugh because she really did not want to be on the show, like, at all. I feel like I, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> at all. Like, the whole time. The whole time. The whole time. So it makes me, like. Till today. Yeah. yeah. She still doesn't want to hang out with us. Yeah. <laughs> well, but she, like, had, you know, she was, like, going to college. She, like, had her life. She was, like, really being, like, I want to get this real internship. I care about fashion, you know? And yeah. so I think we were always sort of negotiating with her. And she I did get Whitney, her I knew spin-off. Whitney, I knew Whitney before the Hills because oh. Spencer and Spencer, like, growing up in L.A., Crossroads. Yeah. And, like, I when, so when I saw her on the show, it was like, oh, Whitney, you're on the show. She also had a boy friend off yeah. camera that and like Dave Spencer Chern. yes yeah, Dave yeah exactly yeah so he was like an LA kid so I think for her she wasn't sure was if Spencer's it was her best friend yeah, yeah she like, wasn't sure if it was like cool to be on the show or not cool I think she like didn't yeah. she was like I'm in college like what's she was kind of not yeah she wasn't yeah. into it you, yeah yeah but she was into the internship and then I think she grew to really um I mean how mm-hmm. can you like 
put anything down when you're on the cover of Rolling Stones at some point. You know? Yeah. Like, that was, you guys got so big that you yeah. were on the cover of Rolling Stones. Oh, my God. We That's once crazy. were filming in that. the closet, the Teen Vogue closet, and they were looking at covers, and the cover of that month was them. And we were like, this is <laughs> too meta. Like, they're – Try, they're interning for a company they're on the cover of. And, and by the way, That's I crazy. wish because of other shows, I wish that they would have followed their success and their fame, like how they got famous. Kind of like how the Kardashians, like now you know they're famous and they right. go to like red carpet. Like included the fame into the show. Include the fame and include They never did that on in, like, right. even till today. Do you today. think so? I mean, I don't know if that would have. I thought there was something pure about that, like where we didn't break. I'm wall. saying, I'm yeah. saying, probably season by season, no, four, no, by they then, were famous, and you're like, well, really, then, you're I famous, and you're doing we this. We would be filming at a cafe and be surrounded by like thirty yeah, paparazzi. That's when I like, yes, that was terrible. Once, you're right, scene, once that yeah. happened, I think we should have either gone with it or that cut, was cut. hard. Yeah. But yes, I think it was a hard. We wanted to keep everyone in the world of this is your real life still, like you know. But then when everyone became, people would call us out. We remember we filmed like an air. Because it's like hard to get permits at LAX. So we filmed an arrivals and a depart. We did like, you know, entrance and exits. Mm -hmm. And like Perez Hilton or things back in the day were like right, right, caught yeah. shooting. <laughs> and like they had the same nail polish. Oh, yeah. Oh, the yeah. hair part. And I'm like, Continuity. Yeah. We were like, well, you pay us to film at LAX. Like, you know how hard it is to get that? Like, right. Yeah. He called know. us out all the time for yeah. things. The hair part and everything. Yeah. Shoes. So since Whitney didn't go to Paris, did she actually do an internship in New York City for Teen Vogue instead? I don't think so, but I don't – yeah, I don't – I mean, she did end up interning at Teen Vogue, but yeah, yeah I don't know that she hmm. – Okay. Let's well, we have to ask her because that's a little blurry to me. Well, Whitney, we, we, we would love to have you on. Man, <laughs> and, uh, why not, right? Yeah. I mean, one day we'll see. So did the producers really fly Josh the date, Heidi's like date from San Francisco to spruce up the drama between her and Jordan? Was that real or not real? Did I honestly like do not remember that. Sorry. Because Jordan was pissed off that he was there, but he was like, how is this guy here out of nowhere? I, I mean, it sounds like something we would do, but I don't, I feel like I would have had to do it. And so you I would remember, I think I would remember, but at that time it just was so the building blocks of the show. So the priority was so much about like the Bolt House, the Teen Vogue, like those were really big cast like relationships for us. So I think that we kind of like let the kids be like, okay, I don't know. You guys together, I not love together. That you keep referring to us we as were, you guys the were the kids. kids. Like the kids are coming, <laughs> oh the kids are whatever. Kids. We were kids. We yeah. Kids. We were. I mean, now I think that like in retrospect, like you were not, but yeah. like, oh, we yeah. were. Yeah, yes. we, we yeah. definitely were <laughs> oh, yes, compared we were. to now. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, because Jordan did say that a producer told him it was set up. Yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised at it. I, I, I feel like once there was maybe like trouble in paradise over there, people were like, OK, we're following a different yeah. mm -hmm. a different story. You have to yeah. remember they were a lot of them were coming off Laguna where these are like deep relationships in high school where things move really quickly. Right. Mm -hmm. And so everyone here was sort of getting to know each other. So I don't think that. Um, it was as easy to be like, how do we show them as close when like they just met you and they just, you know, they just started yeah. internships. We're like, no, TV needs to feel like a little deeper of a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so trying to put everyone in situations where they were together the most and who was the closest so it would look real. You wanted people to be really friends. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And that's hard to produce friendships, mm -hmm. you know? Okay, we have some more questions. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot, Sophia. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'll, I'll do what I can. Yeah. This one's uh, about Jason's birth. Uh, no, Lauren's birthday, and Jason set it up at the Standard Hotel. But obviously, I don't see Jason going and buying all those flowers. Rose petals all over. Oh, yeah. well, if, you know if, 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 if he did it, we would have seen him doing it. Trust me. He would have been out there on the floor. <laughs> I mean, no, Jason, opposite. I, I think that if you would have really done it, it was the other way around. Oh, you don't think they would have showed that? I think we did it, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. But I also have to say, it's like this weird thing where, like, I actually give a lot of credit to you guys is because I do think that we'd be like great film in this location and then like you guys would pay for your own meals yeah. you know towards the end I think we like 
you know, th- not toward the end, but we try to work. It'd be like out. one meal and one drink. Right. No, but out. I'm just saying like it is like it was yeah. this <laughs> weird thing where it's like. Spencer's <laughs> first time filming on the show, his credit card got denied. You right. But, right. <laughs> In front of everybody like goes to pay for the dinner and they're like, sorry, sir, it's declined. <laughs> <laughs> But I think, yeah, I mean, to his credit, he probably oh, was like, shit, I thought, I why that. would, you guys should be paying for this yeah. as a TV show, you know? But I think for us, we're like, no, it's real. Okay, so obviously we saw the girls in the apartment all the time, and they left the apartment. Did you guys clean up that apartment? Did these girls actually move out themselves? What was what was the deal with them? Um, You guys probably, you guys. No, I. Was that a real apartment? Did they really live there? Yeah. Oh they yes! Did. Oh, I remember this. Okay, they lived on one side, and then we just we moved over to the, to the other plaza. side. Yeah, we did help. Because wasn't at one point you guys had like a stage apartment? I, well, I, I was going to say the- you did help decorate and everything. Because when I moved in with Lauren, I was like, we got to like revamp this whole place. Like, remember we got like new everything. Yes, and I think it's because we put once we we put practicals in the, so the lights, so like all the light boxes and stuff, like all the lampshades or whatever like had to sort of be production but there was never like left you know microphones or anything you know no not mics but I mean there was definitely like even at my house yeah this past one like every single recessive lighting was covered with like yeah something or there was lights in the corner that I you would just leave so whenever you'd show up you turn all the lights on and it's like go time yeah because it would take an hour to set up each one so yes I they that Mm -hmm. was really and then we did um, probably help support that move, but not mm-hmm. – imagine, like, the first season is, like, less hands-on and then it just gets more and more hands-on because, like, we need something out of it, you know? But mm-hmm. really, at the beginning, the idea was, like, of course you would move yourself. Then it's like, well, then we're going to be filming you. So I know. We should. You might as well just do yeah. it. <laughs> but you really lived together, so, Yeah, I mean, that was all real. Yeah. I mean – That's, like, college roommates. That's, like, a big Well, yeah, time. you guys would show up. We'd – got home like at three or four in the morning and you guys would show up at like eight o'clock knocking on our door wake up get downstairs in five minutes and we're like <sighs> yeah so hung over there <laughs> were a we lot only, of we, those moments we only had we're to, only 20 years old why were you hung over <laughs> totally when we were 21 yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah um, no one ever cancels for being too hung over no we still everyone powered through we powered through everything yeah. I remember what, someone... Because we had the energy back then. I mean, my totally. God, it was nowadays. No, you wouldn't see me for two days. After, yeah. after bro, bro, the amount of alcohol that we drank back then. Bro, some of us. Oh, my God. <laughs> to, Jesus Christ. That was, those were wild nights. Um. Well, the me and Brian date... So was this set that up? That was like, set up. I, yeah. I feel like Heidi, it just... Because it was Lauren and Jason... Jordan and Heidi and then Jordan and Brian were friends. So they, you guys were trying so hard to get me to like have like the trio. Like if I dated Brian, then we could all hang out or have a story. But it just wasn't happening. Yeah. You weren't feeling the vibes from Brian? No. Really? So (laughs) first base. Where was the date? (laughs) (laughs) Gayukaku. Oh, yeah, yeah. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gayukaku. That sounds like. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Have you never been there? No. You like make your own meat. It's like your Korean barbecue. You like oh, okay. you probably yeah. filmed this scene there. Maybe we've been there. Have we? Uh, oh yeah, on La yeah, yeah. Uh, down, yeah, down by. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I remember now. <laughs> I do. Know, I know. We've Next, been on some yeah, dates like, there. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, only a couple. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last question, Sophia. Yeah, what was the craziest story you've gotten out of a cast member for the purpose of this story? I felt like very clearly my job was to like have like understand what was going on with the talent because I was a talent producer and then go back to production and say, oh, you're these a secret are- agent. No, no. But like, it would be like, okay. You're like a therapist. You were a yeah. Yes. You were like that too. Yeah. <laughs> Th- thank that. you. But I, I do think part of that was like, okay, this is, you know, a birthday is coming up or they're, they're on good terms or not good terms. Like, okay, then the, the, I'd go back and they would say, well, where do we do that? Where would that happen? Like, where is that in their, in their day? So it was a lot of like logistics, you know? And so I feel like, part of the stuff for camera is like, you know, when people would break up or they'd be in real friendship fights, you know, yeah. like I think that was like hard for me because it's, it was hard to go back and be like, we have to go film that, you know? And, but yeah, I just, yeah. I feel like there were a lot of those moments because we were all so close to you too. So yeah. Yeah. The roommate stuff was the hardest stuff because mm-hmm. you're like, yeah, it's really frustrating to have roommates, you know, and in general, and then you have mm-hmm. a TV show on it. So I think I felt bad for 
the whole situation, you know, but that we didn't really know what to do. And like there weren't a lot of women on the crew, you know, so I feel like a lot of the guys were sort of like, let's they keep it moving. It. Like they were and like, they broke up, they together. Like, let's go. We're way more emotional. <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah. And like you didn't have your families here. And so I felt sort of responsible in a lot of ways as like a sister or something to be like, wait, they're like in, you know, real friendship fights and real relationship stuff. And like, even though your family was in Orange County and Lagoon and, yeah. and, and obviously Colorado, but it did feel like we were sort of like at camp. Well, you guys yeah. were our family. We yeah. Like, we never really went down Orange County. No, you never had ever. any breaks. Like, no, it, we yeah. were filming nonstop. And the way you let us into, you know, the homes and stuff was production would just be in there setting up, like, while – you know, through your stuff. Like I've like sat under someone's bed with like truly their like stuff there. And I'm like, oh my God, this is <laughs> laying on there. Yeah. You know, so like we oh, really- towards the end it got to remember there was we would catch them in Cabo and all of a sudden because we used to do this little thing on our mics where we'd just be like, Oh yeah. Hey, hey you hit the mic as you're talking and so or they couldn't scratching. use the audio and then you guys are like oh these motherfuckers and you started putting them underneath the uh, tables we'd find little mics hidden you guys started to really yeah get, well I mean how many times you were always you... on top of that Brody always looking <laughs> was... for the mics yeah he, he had a lot more to be paranoid about than, <laughs> yeah. than, 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 yeah, exactly. than I mean the on the new you. season yeah, on the new exactly. beginning oh, thing knows? we found a guy in the bushes <laughs> trying to film Brody and I'm like I go Brody but... and he goes <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we. I don't think we would have done that. that. I don't think we would have done that. No, you guys were good. I think it was more to not to spy on us, but actually, it was sort of to spy on us to, to hear what real conversations we were having to be able to produce the show for them. Not using the audio, but just sort of be like, okay, what is actually going yeah, on? Yeah, but there? you guys would take your mics into the bathroom so like well we uh, would try we, to take them off and then you guys would film up against the door and like, yeah listen. So I remember <laughs> being like I cannot hear them pee one more time like I was like I'm gonna we'd be like oh they're in the bathroom like and then like someone had to, one person would have to stay on in case anyone was talking but I'm like I can't all right uh before we oh get into God. Frankie's confession corner Sophia what have you been up to now like what's what's been going on um, well, I had a website, a content site called Hello Googles, and then I sold that and um, to Time Inc. And now I'm in the food space, and I have a seasoning company with Chef Roy Choi. Oh, so, wow. oh wait, I yeah. love Roy Choi. Yeah, he, the Kogi truck. Yes. Yeah, we have like a plant-based some, vegan pasta seasoning mix. Oh, my <laughs> girlfriend would yeah. love that. Oh, she vegan? Be a, yeah, she's oh, vegan. Oh, yeah, I'll send yeah. you some for sure. Yeah, um, I love that. But yeah, so I'm in like the food space, not really TV stuff, so... Um, but I'm happy that. to, I was happy to take a break from it. Are you ready to go to the new, new beginnings with us? Our new, we have I a new know. show idea. It's called Over the Hill. Yes. Over the Hill. <laughs> <laughs> Over the you know what? I, I think a big lesson from seeing this is like sometimes when you let it breathe with these longer scenes and with music and stuff that it really can hold the test of time. I do think you guys doing the show is great because people are rewatching the show and right. they're watching it because they're like, we loved LA. Like they love these characters. Like it's not a silly drama. To people. Uh, so you many know, people come up to me and they're like, "We moved to LA because of you and because of this show, and we went to Ladue." And yeah, yeah, Our and sh- mm-hmm. you guys really made yeah. an effort to like take LA by storm for you know. And, and well, we had you guys with <laughs> us, so <laughs> yeah. Oh, we went in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Frankie, I think it's time for your confession corner. I want to know. Do I feel guilty? <laughs> I would say, yeah, is, is there any part of you like that you feel a little guilt of like how certain things came down at the end? And the other one is like, who was your favorite cast member? Oh. Um, okay, that's a two parter. Yeah, but, because, um, because the first one, like, it's easier. And the second one, if you no. don't want to answer, she's going to answer. You have to pound a warm, no, pound a warm, this mamitas. A warm yeah. spicy <laughs> margarita mamitas. I wouldn't say favorite, but I would say during the season, um, Whitney was the most like-minded person to me because we had both grown up here. And so it wasn't she was my favorite, but like we were in her family. Like we had a a, a good like rapport because it was sort of like, I'd be like, come on, Whitney. Like she would just talk in the same way that I would talk. And so I felt like comfortable. Even yeah. though she was frustrating that she wouldn't film, I sort of got it mm-hmm. because I was like, I guess I don't know if I would film. You know, like mm-hmm. so I feel like Whitney was the one that I um was sort of like easiest, but I think at the same time. Um, all of the 
like Audrina, Heidi, and Lauren all became like super important in different ways. But I think that overall, um, I'm still really close to Lauren, you know? And so, and I think because of that is like a sisterness of, you know, you spend so much time with someone and, and it feels like we went to, I keep saying like, I didn't go to college. Those are the years I was, could have gone to college. You were and so, at Fit em with her. Yeah, I was at Fit em with her. And so I, I have a lot of love for, um, for her. So yeah. So I would say yeah. Lauren, but I, I loved all. And then when the guys came in, it was just a different role. It's hard for a woman to like ask a guy so many things. Like I felt really comfortable with, with the women. Cause I was like, okay, you're breaking up. I can relate to it. Yeah. Sometimes it was more helpful when like a director or Colin or something would talk to the guys. Yeah. Cause it's no one, I, I come to come off judgmental if I'm like, oh, you're dating like poor people. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I like, it just wasn't the right role for that. Even not to gender it, but I think in that scenario. When it comes to the four girls, you're like, which one had to go? If someone <laughs> Which one had to go? Um, well, at the moment. Which one would you kill, Sophia? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I had to answer it, it's not kill. But I would say at that point, I would have cut Whitney because I would have said, let's put you out of your misery. You know? Yeah. Because oh, she didn't she want to be. Yeah. Because I think she hated filming. She's so good at answering right. the questions. <laughs> no, but I'm it's serious. She didn't want to film and yeah. I think everyone else was like hype about it. So it right. makes a difference, you know. Yeah. You don't want to be too hype, but you want to have that. That's a great response. <laughs> yeah. Right. Put her out of her misery. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Follow, rate, and review The Hills Rewatch wherever you listen to your podcasts. And if you like to watch us, go check us out on YouTube. Thanks so much for being here, Sophia. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video, guys. Be sure to start with the pilot episode and catch all of our episode recaps.